Fluval has a number of really great products. And a very common theme on this channel tends to be a lot of lighting. We've already covered the Fluval Plant 3.0. Now it's time for the little brother, the Aqua Sky. This is the Fluval Aqua Sky Ultimate Guide. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today we're going to start part one of the ultimate guide to the Fluval Aqua Sky 2. That's this guy, right here. Now, this is this light's currently on one of my tanks, so we're going to talk a little bit about its features, the basics, and understanding what you can and can't do with this light in the first part. And then in part two and part three of the guide, we'll go over a full set of settings in both auto mode and pro mode that I've been using and finding phenomenal success with. If you're looking for just a generic review of what the goods and the bads of this light are, there's going to be a link to that down in the description, as well as it's up in the corner right now to my full review of the Fluval Aquasky 2. Let's get started talking about this guy. The Aquasky 2 has a couple of major important features, and in some cases people may see this as a downside, but it's important to understand. Now first off, the Aquasky is a app-controlled light only. That means that you will need to go and download the Fluval Smart app, which conveniently, if you buy an Aquasky on the back of the package, You'll see right here, easy QR codes that go straight to the app for both Android and Apple. Or you can just look up Fluval Smart inside your appropriate app store, whether it's the Google App Store or the iTunes or Apple App Store. Very easy to find. It's a really great app. That means also on the top of the light, there's no manual button to press to control the light. It is purely app controlled from a mobile device. For some people, that's going to be a downside, but I would argue that that's part of how you're getting a little bit of cost savings in this light when compared to the Fluval Plant 3.0. The other major difference with this light is that it's only a single row of LEDs. So if we look here, just much like we'll use, we'll use this box for a lot of our demonstrations, but it's just a single row of LEDs going two white LEDs and then a tricolored RGB LED that gives us some of our color. This is a lot less wattage, so this example here, this is the 36 inch light that I've been using, is only 27 watts. If you compare that with the Plant 3.0, it's about half. Not exactly, it's slightly more, but it's a lot less power. Now the good news is that means that it's not gonna cost you as much to run this thing. Now that we've got all that basic stuff out of the way, let's talk about the real difference in this light, and that's once you start controlling it inside the Fluval Smart app. Now. After you've downloaded the Fluval Smart app, there's a couple things you're going to want to do just to make sure. You should first be taken to the device list. And if you see no devices present, then what you're going to do is tap the icon up in the upper right hand corner. And then in that drop down menu, you should see add device. So you're just going to press that and that's going to take you through a process. You'll most likely see the Bluetooth ID for your light instead of a name. So it's going to look like a bunch of numbers and letters. It'll look really funky. Don't worry. That's your light and you can rename it later. Select the light. That'll help you pair. Now you're going to usually see a screen kind of like this. I'll actually show you my phone, but we'll get a screenshot up here just to be certain. You'll see manual, auto, and pro. If for some reason you do not see pro mode, you will need to go into your app store and update the Fluval Smart app. Also, with your light, there's a potential that there's new firmware. So once you've connected to your light, go ahead and again, hit the three button icon in the upper right hand corner, and you should see an option to update firmware if an update is available. If you don't see that, then it's already up to date and you're A-OK. -okay. A little note about updating. If you are updating the firmware, sometimes it can be a little finicky if you don't keep your device relatively close to your light. So during the process of the firmware update, just set your phone nearby or stay nearby the light until it completes. This just helps make sure it's safe. If for some reason you have any issues updating the firmware or you're unable to control the light after a firmware update, 
scroll down in your device list to the very bottom of the list, and you'll see a couple of links for support and FAQ. And that should give you some direct help from Fluval in order to get this resolved, because it is fixable. It's an occasional problem we saw with the very first Fluval Plant 3.0s, but honestly, I haven't seen it regularly reported in the Aqua Sky at all, so it's pretty unlikely you're going to run into this problem. Let's talk about the manual mode first. You're going to notice, even looking at my phone here, it looks kind of like one of the remote controls that you can get with a lot of the other Fluval lights, something like the Fluval Flex that has a built-in light or any of the kits like that, and it functions really similarly. You can set a lot of colors. You have a one, two, three, and four preset here that you can use uh, to set different presets. Some of the things that are different here when compared to the Fluval plant light is the plant light allows you in manual mode to select 1% at a time for the lights, whereas the Aqua Sky only allows you to go in 20% intervals. So that means that your whichever color of light it is, whether it's the white, the green, the red, or the blue, you can go 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% power. You can't do full individual percents in manual mode. Now you can have, you have a bunch of little features like storms and moon cycles and all kind of stuff. That's fun occasionally for displays, but you're not really going to use this too often. Where you are most likely going to be using manual mode is if you want to get an idea of what certain things look like, or potentially if you ever film or take pictures, go into manual mode, pump everything to 100%, and that way you don't mess with your automatic or pro mode settings, and then you can just bounce back into those modes when you're done messing with the tank or whatever you need to do. Manual mode is really great if you're doing something in your tank outside the hours that it's normally at light, or to make sure that you're at maximum possible light so that you can see the absolute best when you're not using your normal settings. Now, Let's talk about auto mode. I think this honestly is your best friend, especially for those of you who this is the first time using this light and you're just kind of getting used to it or you're getting a brand new tank and you're gonna start with this light. This is your best friend, auto mode. Auto mode has four different major things and then a sleep mode. You have sunrise, daylight, sunset, and night. The sunrise is a time that you can set between as little as a few minutes all the way up to several hours, and it'll start from zero or whatever your sleep mode is set to, and go all the way up to the settings that you set for your daylight setting. Daylight is where you set the maximum amount of light you want your light to get to, and for how long. And the way that you determine how long is just when you stop your sunrise and start your sunset. It's pretty easy. You just kind of do the math in between. Sunset, again, is going to be the opposite side. It slowly ramps the light down. And this is where you actually can go by individual percents is starting in auto mode. Finally, you have night mode. And this is a way just to have a little bit of night light if you want that. If you want some trailing off light, maybe it's just a little blue light to simulate moonlight. And potentially, if you want to have no sleep, aka no period where the light is completely off, you would set this inside of your night mode and that would allow you to have small amounts of light or whatever amount of light you want through the rest of the day. Or, I guess, in this case, night. So, what would I generally suggest when it comes to auto mode? If you're doing a new tank, we're going to do a couple of tricks to be safe. But in general, what I suggest is anywhere between an hour and two hours of sunrise and the same amount of time for sunset. You can have it a little slower, but I have found in my experience that slower ramp up is much easier for your fish and also is a way that we can have light on a little longer, see some cool natural effects, get an idea of a more natural daylight cycle for our fish, but at the same time, not have too much light right away. So in the case of say, CO2 injection in a tank, you have a good time when the light is slowly coming to pace where CO2 can get fully proliferated in your tank before you get to the maximum light. For your daylight settings, in general, I would suggest uh, a high amount of white light, green, red, and a very low amount of blue. In general, what we've seen is that blue LEDs in most aquariums tend to help algae take off. And if we reduce that blue light, we tend to see a lot less algae outbreaks occur in our aquariums. This is no science here. It's just something that myself and many, many other people I've talked to have experienced where at first when we had our blue light very high, we started dealing with things, especially blackbeard algae occurring in some of our aquariums. And when we started cutting that blue light back and sticking only to 
the red and white and green spectrums of light, we saw significantly less algae in our aquariums. So just a little t pro tip there. There's two different settings I would look at as just a basic starter point for your auto mode. Number one is if you're doing any shallow tank. So this is something like a 20 gallon long, 10 gallon, uh, the like 33 longs, any of those tanks that are somewhere between 10 and about 13, 14 inches tall. Not quite as tall a tank. You don't want to push as much light. Now, the good news is there's not as much light coming out of the aqua sky. So we can put it a little higher than we would some of the other lights. And in this case, what I would suggest is your white set to 70% as a maximum during your daylight, your red set to 60, your green set to 50, and your blue set to 10%. Then, of course, you're going to have your hour to two hours of sunrise and sunset. And depending on how long those are, so if you only have an hour of sunrise I, and then an hour of sunset, I would run this for six hours of daylight. If you're going to go with a two-hour sunrise and a two-hour sunset, shave that down to four or four and a half hours of day. That way you're not getting too much long-term light, especially if your tank is a little newer. Now, if you're going with a brand new tank, my biggest tip here is at first start your light at 50% of whatever your target is, unless you're starting with CO2 injection to start. If you have no CO2, a low tech styles aquarium, let's make sure we dim that light down some or even 75% to start and slowly ramp it up over time as your plants get settled in and begin to grow. So let me give you an example. Let's say we're doing that 70% again, we're on a 20 lawn. I want you to start at 40% white and dial everything all back accordingly. So we're going to go 40% white, 30% red, 25% green, 5% blue. And then you're just going to keep increasing each one over the next couple weeks. So you'll wait two weeks, make sure your plants are settled in. If you start to see some new growth and you're not seeing a lot of algae, increase the whites by 10%, the reds by 10%, the greens by 10%, and the blue by 1%. You're going to do this slowly but steadily. And this, you can do this one week gaps after the first major bump until you hit the maximum value you want. The reason why we do this is it inhibits the algae while we're establishing our aquarium and our plants. That lets them get up to speed, get established, convert if they need to, should they be grown immersed. And from there, you're going to have a lot more success and a lot less algae. If you have a taller tank, something like a 40 breeder or higher, where you're at least 16 inches in your aquarium, Go ahead and go all the way to 100% white, 80 or 90% red, depending on your personal taste. Again, something like 70 or 80% green, personal taste here. And you can go up to, I would say, 15% blue, but don't go much higher. 10% is probably still safe. You don't really need a lot of blue light to be effective with plants. They do great off just white and red as is. Now, in general, the Aqua Sky is a light that is really great if you have lower to medium demand plants. So things like Java Fern, Cryptocurrines, Anubias, Boost, those very low, slow-growing plants. The Aqua Sky is a fantastic light for these kind of tanks. A tank like this one behind me, which is almost all Java Fern, or the one where I've done a lot of this testing, which is Java Fern and Crips, it goes gangbusters with that light, a little bit lighter power or intensity of light for a longer period of day. You can do with this light, the great thing is you can have your lights on much longer during the day at lower power and those easy low demand plants will do amazing and they'll propagate a ton. I have practically a crypt carpet in one of my tanks. They're so happy under this aqua sky. But if you're dealing with more high demand plants, these are your, your rare or very fine leaf plants. Again, examples would be like your Ludwigia whites or some of your brighter red rotalas. You might want to look into the Fluval plant, which is a more powerful light and can provide the raw power you need to get those plants the kind of happy you're looking for. Unless you're in a shallow tank. If you are in a shallower tank, like one of those 20 longs or something like that, and you're trying these plants, just bump your power up a little bit higher as long as you're not dealing with algae and you should be okay. That's it. We've had our screenshots. We've looked at it. This is our introduction to the ultimate guide to the Fluval Aquasky 2 the app controlled version of the aqua sky. I really love this light. I won't lie. I've done a great review. I've told tons of positives. I think there are very, very few negatives with this light, especially if you use it in the right application, those lower demand plants. This is a great, fantastic light for those kind of tanks. Or if you're looking for something that maybe you don't want too much light because certain fish tend to prefer darker environments, 
this is a great option. And it's not quite as expensive as Bigger Brother Fluval Plant, so save a little bucks at the same time. With that being said, look forward to ne next week where we'll do part two of the Ultimate Guide to the Fluval Aqua Sky 2. We'll go through my full auto mode settings and a couple of interesting tricks that might help you out in certain situations. If you've enjoyed this video, please, please, please give it a little thumbs up. Give it a like. It really helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing. I'd like to give a, a massive thanks to Fluval. Just they've, they've been really sweet to me in the past. Uh, technically, they provided me this light disclosure there, the, the light that I've been using for testing. They provided to me, but it was not specifically for this video. Uh, it was for some other stuff involving the Fluval plant. Uh, and, and this sweet hat they sent me at one point. I love this hat. But <laughs> full disclosure there, uh, you know, I'm not being paid for this. They definitely go, don't get to see any of my videos before they're released to the public. It's just they were really sweet and, and gave me this light and were like, hey, man, go nuts. Do, say what you want to say about it. We'd love to hear from you. So if you enjoy this kind of stuff, shoot me in the comments down below. Let me know. Does this help? Have you tried this light? Are you looking forward to trying this light? Really want to know. Stay tuned for next week. We'll start getting into auto mode. And then week three, pro mode. Trust me, you're going to want to see my pro mode settings. They do some crazy stuff with this light. If you're new, this is your first time seeing this, consider subscribing. Maybe even just tickle that little notification bell. That way you don't miss any of the videos like these where you can get all sorts of tips from someone like me, a master aquatic horticulturalist who loves planet tanks, likes talking about all sorts of equipment, and has a giant penchant for rainbow fish. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and stay awesome.